contact you, really. To, yeah. Because you are like this big woman. Oh, thanks. You're like this woman. <laughs> and so I run um, resets, and it's all about resetting nutritionally as well as physically and mentally. <laughs> We're talking about food all the time. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and the major things of the resets is it's just taking it back to basics yeah. and, you know, planning out food, um, using my fitness power to see actually the energy quantity of the food that we're eating. Sometimes we're not quite sure, are we? Yeah, very true. And I'm not obsessive about tracking, but it really helps. So I was hoping you'd answer some questions and I've got them here on my computer. So do you want to introduce yourself first and say who you are, what you do? Yeah, sure. I'm Annabelle Goniface. I'm the founder of Dizzle Sky, which is which helps people achieve their healthy cooking and eating goals. <laughs> so there's loads of synergy, I think, between what we do. Um, I look at it from the kind of cooking process aspect, because as much as we will want to eat well in order to kind of live well, there's a process before that in that we have to get the food on our plate well food in our house and then on the plates so yeah. that's a bit that i really focus on i am kind of known for family food because i have my own children but actually within the family food yes i talk about nutrition um and it's all how i call it healthful eating so it's all food that's full of health rather than going on a diet or anything like that it's just a, a balanced way of eating um but it's very much supporting the person who cooks so so not so not necessarily doing the kind of the the looking at exactly what is on the plate although i do do that but it's more kind of the support and the confidence for whoever is cooking to feel good about themselves in the kitchen because i just don't think there are enough conversations around it in fact we you know we say it's a nightmare we have to do it three times a day every day it's one of the basic human needs and i just don't think there are enough conversations around how hard it can be and yeah. complicated and scary and overwhelming and emotionally draining, time draining, all the things. Is it is it's a it's a lifestyle habit, isn't it? I've just been listening to a training video actually and um it was Emma Story Gordon and she said and someone once said to her, There's no point in me giving you the perfect body because you won't be able to sustain it. Mm. And it's a bit like, as you say, there's no point me giving you the perfect, you know, kitchen. Oh, perfect, because you have to be able to sustain it. We need to know, have our tips and tricks and mm -hmm. how to do it. So when people come to me, I can't, there's no point me saying to them, like, you know, they, they have to learn the lifestyle habits. And that's the big thing about what you and I try, are hoping to help people do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as much information as I kind of can help people with as possible to help them. <laughs> Yeah, so I keep starting my questions. Yeah, yeah. Nine questions. Oh, yeah, so just chat. <laughs> yeah. What, oh, okay, this is quite a hard one. What are your favourite family weekday meals? So have you got any specific meals that are like your go-to? I have, and they're, they're quite basic, actually. <laughs> so my kids are four and six and just turned nine on Friday. And the eldest clearly isn't on Instagram so I can talk about him um he's quite a picky eater and always has been and he's been one of my reasons to start this or sky because I know it's really tricky because I thought as a chef I'd find it really easy and it's just not as easy as you might think pre-parenting so um and they all have hot school lunches which is brilliant I'm really pleased um but they kind of the hot school lunches slightly take away what I would often cook them like, you know, the spaghetti bolognese and the chilli and things like that. So I really, I, they go on a, a two-week menu plan. So I kind of look at that and then I plan um, something that's not the same, basically. Because every now and again, if you don't look at your school's menu plan, they might have spaghetti bolognese for lunch and then you've got spaghetti bolognese ready for dinner and you're all proud of yourself. And then you're like, oh, God, it's what you had for lunch. So, it so that means you can kind of do your own two-week menu plan as well yeah exactly exactly so i just work off the back of that and i they are hungry we get home at five and i've given them like a piece of fruit or something in the car and they are really hungry and they're really ratty and we've still got homework to do so it's either something that i can prep as we all know it's all the same isn't it that's what's great it's happening in everyone's household um 
So it's either work from home, so it's something that I can prep before I leave home at three to go and pick them up, or it's something that's super quick. When I get back, I can just turn around with people screaming at me and they'll be having fights and things like that. Sounds awful, but it's reality. Um, so it's either something prepared or something super quick when I get back. And one thing I will always do is look at time constraints. Again, with meal planning, I don't think time constraints are so often taken into consideration. So, you know, if we have to go somewhere after school, that will be taken into account. If I'm at home working all day and something can go in the oven in a slow cooker, that will be taken into account. Um, for example, tonight, having sausages and mash and some leftover gravy from the weekend and veg. It is pretty basic in the week. And I will also do lots of meals where there's things in the middle of the table. So say like tacos or something like that, where they can help themselves to the amount that they want. Because um, I just don't find they want uh, necessarily a really big plate of food when they get home. Um, and I found kind of as they get older to actually start with smaller portions. And if they want seconds, they come back for more rather than like overwhelming them with food. And they're like, ah, I can't eat it. So I would take that onto the adults really as well. So that's what I suggest. I just try and keep it simple. And if needed, you repeat meals. So have a meal plan, you have one week and then you have the next second you repeat plan, it makes it easier. Yeah. And also it's a really good point, having smaller portions and then adding to it, because a lot of people put on weight because the portion size is uh, just too big and they don't need that amount of energy. So, yeah, absolutely. And, I think, and especially when you're cooking, it's like, as the mum or the dad or whoever's cooking, you know, we can't really control how hungry people are. You know, we can only second guess as to how hungry all these little tiny individuals Change. are. Um, yeah, we, we try, but we can't, we can't always get it right all the yeah. time. And I also, in the week, I do tend to put all the veg on the middle of the table. So maybe I'll serve their mash and um, sausages tonight, but always put gravy on the side and put their vegetables on the table. And I'll tend to do, try and do between one and three different veg, because it's variety as well, isn't it? For our microbiome to work really well. It loves yeah. variety. So instead of just putting loads and loads of veg in, I will um, just have the assortments so that, again, they can help themselves to. And they always, they always get there. I mean, I always have to remind them, and your veg. Okay, mum. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would say to any mums who, you know, wanting to take control of their nutrition and their weight as well, is they can join in in that meal, couldn't they? Like with the sausages, it was a veggie sausages. Yeah. And load on load on the veggies. Yeah, absolutely. Always so, protein. Yeah, absolutely. Load on the veggies. I mean, for instance, tonight, because I my husband loves meat, he's South African, so he's having that. But I've got a leftover um I've got a leftover smoked haddock and pumpkin risotto in the freezer. Oh, so I've taken that out for myself because no one else can touch that. But I've taken that out for myself and I'll have that. So I think it's mums as well. Just we'll all be eating at the same time and I won't have had to have cooked a different meal. But if there are like nice little extras that I know I'll eat but not necessarily so, the other, I'll then have so, that. So I think so it's all meals. Do you eat slightly different sometimes to the kids as well then? Yeah, I do. And I think that's really important. I love food and I love spices and all sorts of weird and wonderful foods. And I don't want to feel um, kind of bogged down just by eating what they eat. But equally, I don't, you know, there's a limit to the amount of adventurous food you can give children, really, is what yeah. I've learned as a parent. You know, that's in my parent hat on. Um, yeah. And they will try new things, but when they're tired and after school, it's just not necessarily the time to try. Um, and so, but we will try, we try and eat together the majority of the time in the week time, because I quite like doing the time restricted eating. Um, so I like to have a long uh, kind of fasting session, I guess. Yeah. So we eat at six, then I have breakfast at seven the next day. That's a 13 hour window. And that actually, above anything, that has changed the way I sleep. It's definitely helped with weight loss. I mean, I could never, ever kick my weight. How much exercise I did, whatever I ate, I always found, I just kind of just held this really kind of big body. And then as soon as I started having that longer window in the evening, 
that it just came off much more naturally. Well, it just came off. I didn't even have to think about it. It's acid low, extra, it's less calories, isn't it? So yeah. it's a fasting, but actually it's just having less calories in your body. It's working out a way. And apparently it's quite good for menopause. And Yeah, and it gets it gives your body, I mean, the way I see it, it's like a, it's like a field. And if you're walking across it all the time, it's just constantly trodden down. And then if you give it a bit of a break, the grass can kind of grow back. And I think that, and it works with your growth hormones and it works with all your repair hormones in your body. And I just think, well, you know, as much research as I've done about it, it's always pretty positive. Um, yeah, so that happens. So what would you say to people that um, are wanting to meal plan and want to have a in their meals? Have you got anywhere you would suggest that they went to look? Well, I'm actually creating a new resource on this, a free resource. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am such a big thing and I think people don't necessarily know how to go about it it's like I've got to meal plan it's like another to-do list um okay so I'm going to throw something completely different in there so for me there are two main things for meal planning a you've got to look at time constraints so you've got to look at your diary and you've got to see where your pockets of time are to cook because there's no point planning these lovely recipes and what you want to produce if you haven't got the time to do it. Like for me, that is number one goal um, to make sure it's going to work within the time that you've got. So if you are taking little Johnny to swimming after school, don't plan a casserole that you have to, you know, to start cooking when you get back from swimming because he'll be starving. So therefore have looked earlier on in the day, get it prepped then. So all you need to do is heat it up. So that kind of thing, really look at the logistics, I guess, the operations of your schedule and, and focus on that first. The second thing I fully believe, in, and I've got an online course coming about it, is about cooking for your personality type. So we all do things differently. And planning, if you think of planning, anything you do is probably very different to the way your colleague does it or your friend or your mum or whoever. So in terms of meal planning, I'd actually look at it at the planning part and plan like you plan for work, plan like you plan for holidays, plan like you plan for any other aspect of your life where you need organisation. Does that make sense? So you're mirroring what kind of systems that you've already put in your brain. Yeah. So it makes it easier. Yeah. It just makes it easier because if I, if someone gave me a really strict, I'm, I'm a creative person. If someone gave me a really strict menu plan that I had to adhere to, I'd be like, oh, I want to rebel. And instantly you feel you're setting yourself up to fail, basically. Yeah. And you want to, in, within your kind of within your subconscious by now as parents, with I'm 42, I would have created all these like micro habits and systems and other aspects of my life in order to survive and run my kind of day to day and it's a case of just mirroring that in the kitchen yeah I'm never related to the personality and I love that because there'll be some people that never plan and some people really plan so I don't do meal plans I always say there's no point that's because I'm very much about sustainable lifestyle habits so if I gave some a rigid meal plan and they followed it for two weeks then they stopped they're just going to go back to old habits it's all about creating new habits and I love that about planning like your personality and I know people are going to go oh I don't plan <laughs> then you might need to create some planning habits <laughs> but, they, and, but they would have already like there will be aspects they might not plan but there will be a way whether they just do mental notes they might wake up in the morning and go okay what yeah. are we going to have for dinner that to me is planning it is here isn't it and it at the can be here it it can be on your phone, but then you'll have the other end of the spectrum where it will be on an Excel spreadsheet and they will never, you know, that's what it is for two weeks and it's very, okay. but so what I would say to those like very different people, if that is your style of planning and everything's on a colourful Excel spreadsheet, that is how you should nail plan. And if you don't plan and everything's just kind of like in your head, then that is how you should nail plan. So don't, so so meal plan how it feels natural to you rather than feeling like you have to like achieve this meal planning certificate because there is no certificate for it I promise you. <laughs> I'm going to work with you. Meal planning chat with my reset books. So <laughs> I'm going to talk about that tonight. I love that. No do and I and that's where I'm going to create this resource and I'll share it with you Kirsty when I do. Yeah. Amazing and you know 
love to be involved. So um, I have some of the questions. So things like, oh yeah, so this is, what's your approach to your weekly food shop? Yeah, okay. So online I, market? Uh, yes, I have tried online shopping a few times and I just can't, I like, I'm a, again, I'm, a, I'm an um, extrovert a little bit. So I like to be able to feel food, see food, um, and I like chatting to people in the supermarket. I love chat. I love having a chat with the ladies on the till, uh, all the men. Um, yeah, online shopping annoys me when you get the substitutes. So I turn off substitutes, and then you don't get any food. Like a seventy-five quid shop could be like a thirty quid shop, and then you have to go to the shops. That irritates me so much. But again, for other people, it one hundred percent works. They know exactly what they need, um, and I will always kind of scribble down a vague meal plan then do a shopping list based on my what I've got in my store cupboard so always check freezer fridge store cupboards do my list go to the shop and I have to say stick to the list <laughs> I'm a stick to the lister I do I do say so I shop at home always shop at home first yeah definitely quite often find what we want at home yeah, with that, one of the biggest things we did in the kitchen club, in my kitchen club uh, membership over the summer, is we we I made them look at their freezers as their best friends rather than their graveyard enemies. And actually, to do a freezer audit, to clear it out, anything you don't know what it is, throw it away, because we'll never eat it if you don't know what it is. And actually know what's in there. So that is also shop at home. You know, shop in your freezer first, rather than just going, whoa, oh, don't know what that is. Yeah, it's so true. Love that. Um, so, yeah, so protein. So when I chat to people, yeah. a lot of the time is that weight loss and nutrition. Often it's the protein that needs to be increased in the diet. Yeah. Carbs and fats just happen. You yeah. know, they are everywhere. But it, often it's the, the, the protein. So how do you have a, fo have a focus on protein at all? Do you think yeah. it's funny? Yeah, absolutely. Protein is a real protein and fiber. I meant my biggies. Fiber, yeah. Real biggies. Um, so protein we have we have eleven chickens, so we have lots of eggs. And even with my picky eater son, we try and get eggs in, in the morning for breakfast. So like all kinds to, to able to rotate it, we'll do boiled, poached, scrambled, bird in the nest, omelets, whatever. If you know, as long as everyone can have eggs in the morning, we definitely eat a lot of eggs. Um we eat lots of fish or as much fish as I can. For instance, for myself for lunch, I'll often make just smoked mackerel pate with a dollop of yogurt, also quite good protein, and just smash it up um, and add a squeeze of lemon. So there's no there's no cream cheese or creme fraiche or anything that goes into it. It's just smoked mackerel and um, and yogurt. And then on the weekends, I try and add as many pulses and beans into things. So I love a uh, slow cook and I love putting or lotty beans in or butternut <laughs> beans or the red lentils that just go to much yeah. that thicken yeah. things that the kids would never know that they eat lentils yeah so I love beans and I'm whacking them into everything yeah it's not so keen <laughs> yeah it's such a it's love lentil soup yeah exactly a lentil soup a tomato and lentil soup that I'll then convert into a pasta sauce or a pizza sauce well, last night I made it into some really random kind of pasta bake. But yeah, to have a basic sauce, I know it's got really like loads of veggies in. So I have onions and garlic and celeriac and celery and carrots and red pepper and tomatoes and lentils. And then mm. keep reproducing that in various forms yeah. um, throughout the week. Just superfoods. Yeah. Um, so going a bit more, so what do you love about food? What do I love about what I do? I love, I love helping people. I love, uh, I, okay, I wrote this down because I, I really kind of try to get into what I love. I love being able to help people with like sustainable, which is what you said as well, transformational change. So again, I don't want them to be doing it for two weeks and then back to the old ways. It's about it being sustainable. And what I love the most is when you talk to people when they first meet them, their body language is really kind of tense. And then a few weeks, months in, the whole body language changes. And for me, that's what I get to observe. And I just, that, that just, yeah, that keeps me going. I'm completely there. So was there a life-changing moment to, to, do, to change, to do what you're doing? 
Um, yeah, it was my kind of, it's got a bit like this, um, in that I've always cooked, we used to run a chalet company in the Alps, we'd have people come and stay, my kitchen was really small and it was right near the dining room, so I have always had these 16 people in my kitchen as I was cooking, and just lots of conversations around the food, um, and I love that, but I always felt like I was the cook, which I was, and I wanted to empower people to be able to cook like I could at home, so I wrote the cookbook, but then I wanted to do more. And then when I was working in travel sales, when I came back, we did bits on personality types. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so fascinating. And it was then that I linked these the different personality types, basically, to different ways you can cook. Um, so I guess that was a real changing moment. And then I, I became a facilitator in personality types. But I realized I needed to delve much deeper because when people were opening up to me, I didn't have the skills to be able to really help them move forward and progress. So then I became a professional coach and mentor. And I guess that was, that's a real change now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, what services would you have? Because with, with my, my ladies, it's about resetting, it's about prioritizing themselves and yeah. making their own fitness and well-being. And I'm pretty sure I saw something that you're coming out with some emails and, you know, um, yeah. people need more in the kitchen. And, and I can only go so far because I'm doing nutrition, I'm doing physical, we're doing mental. So I can go so far. You have, you know. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I can only go so far as well, which is why it's so lovely to work with people like you, Kirsty, because you can only go so far and it is a whole spectrum, isn't it? I'd say, um, for your reset ladies, I'd say sign up to my newsletter because that comes out weekly and it really goes from kitchen hit tips and hacks to kind of, again, mindset and kitchen confidence. It's all around being the best version of yourself whenever you step into the kitchen. So that is kind of the first place I'd start. And you can get to there um, either at the link of my bio on Instagram, which is still the Sky Kitchen Coach. And it will say free checklist, and you also get a seasoning checklist there. Um, that's, that would be the place to go. My yeah. other services is a mem membership and a new online course. But I just head, head there first and then kind of understand more about what I do. I need to do the same, actually. I need to get around to doing a week. Newsletter. It's um, really fun, actually. It's nice. Yeah. I'm also social media. <laughs> Doing some weird reel at the moment. Oh, you well done. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, amazing. What would you say your top tip is to, or your kind of your thing about what's your main reset? My main my main reset is it's prioritizing yourself because a lot of that come to me and um, they are where they are because I always think of a priority ladder yeah so if you think of a ladder of all your priorities in your life quite often people think of their priorities and I'm like well where are you on that ladder and quite often they're near the bottom and that quite often makes people sad and I don't <laughs> yeah and it does make you realize oh, well actually I'm not up there and I want people to center on themselves prioritize themselves the stronger we are the stronger we can be for others, you know, the more energy we have, the more we can have energy for our family and our friends. You know, the further we are, we can walk up that hill um, and be part of the conversation with the family and friends. Um, it's just completely life changing. And I mean, I was in a position, I was um, poorly and I didn't, you know, I struggled with life, but I know the fitter and the healthier I am, the better version I am of myself. But that goes up. And it's a blooming roller coaster. You know, you have more times for it sometimes. So that's my infinite balance. It's called infinite balance. It's a never-ending balance for physical, emotional, nutritional well-being. Sometimes okay. it's more, sometimes it's less. Yeah. But more time at the kitchen. Sometimes we've got less. Yeah. But it's it's always needed. Always needed to be able to have some kind of plan in our heads. We always need it, don't we? Yeah, totally. And sometimes even now, someone might just have. Come on, this and thought, do you know what? I'm going to go and see Annabelle and I'm going to look and see what I can get. So that you time saving, or yeah, really is about providing for me to provide services that people can continue and not just a two week, three week shebang. So, yeah, that is so great. I love that. I love that because it is, it is like this, mm -hmm. um, and we're not all perfect. and 
Yeah, it is about prioritising ourselves. You're so, you're so right. And that is when we can have the energy to help everyone else. That is what it's yeah. all about. And questioning where you are and being aware of it. I think mm. there's a lot of this. We keep going in life. So actually, when I do my reset, I prioritise myself less. Because it's a bit of a, it's a, it's an everyday thing, the reset. The resets, the Facebook group, and making sure that everyone's all right and trying to get everyone involved and doing different ways to check in. And actually, that's when I can depro myself and I have to shake myself up and go, actually, I need to be okay too. Good so it happens to everyone, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, it's been so lovely to you. Likewise, Nessie, likewise. I love the synergy that we do. It's just fantastic yeah. when you find people like that. Another way to work with each other and yeah. Um so I'll save this and share it and maybe we can, you know, I'll we can share each other's services to see how we can support other people. Or yeah, hundred percent. Do sure my workshop. <laughs> definitely, definitely. There will be more conversations and more work that we can do together for sure. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. You. Bye. 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 And the guys join me. Yeah.